On this Tuesday edition of the Ed Schultz Radio Show, it's day two of our coverage of the Nebraska situation unfolding. It's like there's a new development every day. The environmentalists actually have got a lot of stuff to talk about. And tonight we're going to be talking about a mixture of the pros and the cons with people on the ground that we visited with last Friday. Uh, what's interesting is TransCanada, the oil company based out of Calgary, they're not backing off. They're saying that last week's court ruling by a district judge in Nebraska, it isn't going to invalidate anything. And they're going to, they're still full speed ahead on this deal. They say that last week's ruling to invalidate the proposed route, they say it can't be enforced without a lawsuit, uh, uh, while a lawsuit uh, filed by the landowners is on appeal. So the case, this all is going to end up in the Supreme Court in Nebraska. And President Obama is, he's now a spectator. He's a spectator to what's going on. He may have an opinion on and may know what he's going to do on this, but he's going to let all the legal wrangling end up before he starts making a move on this. And to understand all of this, uh, let's turn now to Dave Domina, who is an attorney fighting the Keystone XL pipeline in Nebraska, and he's running for Senate in Nebraska as a Democrat. Dave, Ed Schultz, good to have you with us. Thank you. I have to say it's Domina. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. No I, problem. I'm not hooked up on Nebraska politics totally, Domina. <laughs> Mr. Domina, thank you, Dave. You bet. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, I suppose if you're running for office, you want to make sure people know what the heck your name is, right? <laughs> yep, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's Dave Domina, folks. Thank you. All right. Uh, I want your take on this ruling and the response from TransCanada on this, uh, to this ruling. Well, it was an unconditional declaration that the statute here in Nebraska violates the state constitution. It's a state law issue. TransCanada is not a party to the case. The case is against the governor. It enjoins him from enforcing the Nebraska law. The governor's got an oath to obey the law, and when a court declares a statute unconstitutional, it sits still until the Supreme Court rules. So TransCanada's press release yesterday was off base. Hmm. But it also shows the nature of their aggression here, doesn't it? It really does. The people I represent, who are farmers and ranchers, have been pushed around by this company and told, given ultimatums, told they'd be taken to court next week, next month, told this was the last and final offer. Those things have proven to be false over and over again. Mr. Domina, do you know how much money they have forked out totally to landowners? And and uh, there's and I told a group in Phoenix, Arizona, on Saturday night when they asked me about the Keystone XL pipeline. I said, look, there's only the twenty second answer here is that you have got a multinational corporation that has cut through the heartland of America and they've cash whipped their way to get this done. Well, how much uh, uh, you would disagree or agree with that? I absolutely agree. And do we know how much money they have forked out in, to these landowners collectively? No, we only know that their first offers have increased literally as much as a hundredfold in some cases, from ten dollars to a hundred thousand uh, dollars and more. And that uh, their their word's never good. Their word is never good. It's really true. I'll. This is my last offer, and then in another two months, this is my last offer. Here's a sign-up bonus. If you don't take it today, it'll disappear, and it doesn't disappear. It goes up. TransCanada has literally tried to cash whip its way across the state. That is the term that I used, and, I mean, I, I, do, I, I sense that on the ground. But, you know, Nebraska folks, uh, I don't know if shy is the word, but a little bit guarded in their answers. You know, they, I mean, they're they, it's, you're, it's like everybody's on a need-to-know basis, if you know what I mean. That's just how Midwestern folks are. They don't pry into other people's business and stuff like that. And I think they're a little bit sh- almost, I think, stunned at how much money is floating around to get this deal done. Well, I think they are, too. And they're not accustomed to having pushy people drive into the yard and be pushy. Uh, so uh, it's a foreign experience. Uh, and uh, they react to it in one of two ways. They're intimidated or they're angry. Mm-hmm. All right. So the legal wrangling of this right now is that it's going to end up, there's been an appeal filed by the governor, and it's going to end up at the Supreme Court, but we don't know the timetable of that, correct? About a year. That's the best bet. Okay. Could the project move forward uh, within the year? 
theoretically, the president could approve the border crossing without knowing what the final route will be in Nebraska. That seems unlikely. If if we prevail in the Supreme Court, and we expect to, there will be a start over. The process will start over in Nebraska, go to the Public Service Commission, and there's a distinct possibility that it would not approve this route. Interesting. How many landowners are we talking about? Uh, the Trans Canada people told me there were over 90% of the landowners have approved this pipeline, and it's only a few standing in the way. That's not true. It's a 270-mile uh, trip across Nebraska along the route of this pipeline, and uh, we've got about 75 miles of that uh, that we know isn't committed. So uh, that's not true. Okay. Uh, so flat out, that's a that's a wrong number at 90 percent. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, are you seeing a mixture of political interests here? Uh, it, it's a very uh, I don't want to say strange bedfellows, but I think people that have aligned themselves on this have never been aligned before on issues. Oh, that's definitely true. This is not a partisan issue in Nebraska at all. The opposition ranges from people who want nothing to do with tar sands oil and are against anything that will facilitate uh, taking tar sands oil out of the earth to people who could care less about tar sands oil but just want to be treated fairly if somebody's going to dissect their farm. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the eminent domain issues? I mean, is this uh, – I visited with uh, Randy Thompson when I was in uh, Nebraska on Friday. He's one of the three who presented the case uh, last September. And, of course, he, he, he and everybody else on that side got a favorable ruling by the – the district judge uh, last week. Uh, the eminent domain, clear, clear it up for us. Uh, who has final authority on all of this? Well, the Nebraska legislature, like every state legislature, is the only part of government that, that can grant the authority to exercise eminent domain to a private company, telephone company, pipeline company, whoever it may be. In this case, the legislature tried to delegate that to the governor to redelegate. The court has said that's not permissible. Our Constitution requires that the legislature, if it wants to, authorize eminent domain for a pipeline company and then condition the use of it on Public Service Commission approval. Can I make a comment or two about how eminent domain ought to work here? Absolutely. This company proposes to put in a pipeline that will transport 830,000 barrels of oil a day. It will make a daily income. It will dissect farms that are used to make an annual income for families. They propose to make one payment to dissect that farm, use that farm for 50 or 60 years, and then abandon their pipe in the ground. You can imagine why farmers don't like it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Dave, tell us about your campaign uh, for the United States Senate. You know, Nebraskans are pretty nonpartisan people. People on the coast think we're deep red, but we have a nonpartisan legislature. Many of our constitutional offices are nonpartisan. I was an independent for years and years because of the nature of my law practice, and when I was approached to run for office, I re-registered as a Democrat. Uh, because I want to be in the general election, frankly, and want to give people an intelligent choice. And that's my objective. And it, it, describe the attitude of uh, Senator Joe Hans and how he has um, uh, dealt with this, these uh, concerned citizens and activists and environmental groups that are very concerned about the Keystone Pipeline. I'm, I'm hearing that there's just nothing but a roadblock at his door. Well, Senator Joe Hans is a very nice person as a human being, yeah. but he's not very involved, and he has not been either sympathetic or supportive of uh, Nebraska landowners in this issue, and frankly has been hands-off for lots of Nebraskans on lots of issues. So I, I think Nebraskans are ready to have a much more involved United States senator. Dave Demina, we will visit again. Thank you. The attorney fighting the Keystone XL pipeline in Nebraska, running for the Senate seat uh, in the U.S. Senate in Nebraska. Thank you, Dave. We'll visit again. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.